परमावधि व्यर्थ एक बार शत्रु इन्हीं वीड़ गानों का साथी उन लोग नारी चिल्ला इन्हीं शत्रु यह तो साथी उन लोग गलत हूँ पालस वाटर लगे अभी ये बड़ी वरिष्ठ बोली रही हूँ Allahu Akbar Ini lah aku jatuh dalam air kan? Air kau jatuh di bawah kan?
Heavy rain, floods and landslides have destroyed or damaged thousands of homes in Kerala. Disaster officers say some 200 people have died since May because of an unusually severe monsoon season. When water came in, we ran away with whatever we could grab. The water came very fast. We had to save our lives. The state is home to 33 million people and 150,000 of them have been sheltering in relief camps. Tens of thousands more remain stranded because 10,000 kilometers of roads have been destroyed or remain underwater. In our village, everyone's houses were destroyed. It will be a long time before we can go back. I have no idea how long it's going to take and where I will take my family. It will take a long time to rebuild. Water levels in the state's 34 dams have reached dangerous highs. State officials are releasing water, sending a heavy flow into rivers. The rain has also crippled water and sewage pumps, leaving millions without drinking water. Our water treatment plants in different places have been submerged underwater. The motors have been damaged. Our first priority is to get the drinking water out to the people. The monsoons have also wiped out crops in a state known for its spices and coffee. Kerala is famous for its palm-lined beaches and picturesque tea plantations. It's a popular destination for both domestic and international tourists. But the main gateway to the region, the airport in the city of Kochi, will remain closed until Sunday. Meanwhile, Kerala residents are bracing for more rain in the days ahead. Paul Chadurji on Al Jazeera.
Slowly picking through the rubble to recover what's left of their lives. The Marikina River burst its banks at the weekend, leaving behind huge mounds of garbage and sludge. Disaster management officials said that in just eight hours, the river rose from 16 to 21 meters. Just shy of the record of 23 meters nine years ago, when 700 people were killed. This car mechanic is trying to rescue his tools. All our belongings were washed away, including the supplies in my shop. Everything is destroyed. Now all that is left are good for nothing, just scrap metal. And here we are trying to clean them up. His case is typical of the region's poorest who are living day to day before the floods and now struggle even more. Officials are asking the international community for help. They want to strengthen and build up their flood control infrastructure. We are creating um, river walls and we are now improving our drainage uh, networks. And as the typhoon season continues, Marikina City and other low-lying parts of the Philippines are bracing for more flooding. Imran Khan, Al Jazeera.
It is nightmare. It's it's so horrible. I just want this to be over. Never will think it's gonna burn like that. Wind, smoke, everything together. There is no place to go for me, but you know we'll figure something out. Flash floods in North Jersey create a different kind of pileup. Rain on Saturday night flooded a local river in Little Falls, Passaic County. Nearly a dozen cars from a nearby dealership were sent floating downstream in a huge mess. Some of the cars still had their sticker prices on them, but wow, look at that sight. New thunderstorms fired up across the Northeast today, keeping flash flood warnings in New York and Pennsylvania in place. It has been a record wet summer in the region. More than 20 inches of rain has soaked State College PA since June 1st, and it is still falling. Don Daly is in the town of Holstead. Dramatic video shows the severity of the flooding in upstate New York as this swollen waterfall pounds traffic 50 feet below. Heavy floodwaters have engulfed parts of New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, washing out roadways, submerging vehicles, and forcing water rescues. The water was so powerful in some towns in central Pennsylvania, it moved entire campers, like this one, downstream. Sheds and cars were tossed across neighborhoods, and entire homes were destroyed. In some places, the floodwaters rose so quickly, they trapped people in their businesses, their homes, even in a daycare. It was scary. Rita Fraley was babysitting some children in her home in Halstead, Pennsylvania, when the floodwaters hit. I used to have to look out the windows and said, oh, Lord, there's a stream coming through. We've got to get out of here. By the time we grabbed the kids and got to the front door, there was nowhere we could go. It's the third time her home was flooded in 12 years. We would love to move somewhere else, <laughs> but you got to go where you got to go. This is what caused much of the damage. Trees that were picked up by the floodwaters and used like battering rams. But let me show you something. This is a before photo of a memorial here in Halstead, Pennsylvania, 
dedicated to the memory of Specialist Billy Evans, a local fallen soldier. And this is what it looks like now. Muddy, battered, but still standing. Dozens of disaster declarations in states of emergency are in effect across New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania after heavy rain and historic flooding. Rushing water destroyed hundreds of homes. This morning, the floodwaters are starting to recede as the cleanup begins. Tony DeCopel is in Hector, New York, with the latest on this story. Waterlogged residents in upstate New York were hit with another round of storms for the third day in a row. Rescue crews spent the day looking for people trapped by rising waters in Seneca County. Just to the south in Montour Falls, floodwaters turned a normally serene view into a violent deluge of rushing water. In the town of Lodi, a sinkhole opened on a roadway while dozens of people were trapped by floodwaters and debris. Have you gone to the other side of the debris? New York Governor Andrew Cuomo toured Lodi and other hard hit areas Tuesday. He declared a state of emergency in more than a dozen counties. This is a different pitch from Mother Nature, and it causes problems in areas that haven't seen it before. Just south of the New York border in Franklin Forks, Pennsylvania, emergency crews were busy rescuing people trapped in their homes. You got it, you got it. Unable to get out in time because the floodwaters rose so quickly. Almost got swept away a couple of times by the water, so kind of see your life flash before your eyes. It's pretty terrifying. In New Jersey, people in the hard hit town of Brick started the long process of cleaning up and rebuilding. Officials say 85 homes here were flooded. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't have to find a new place to live. I don't know. It's really terrible. There are scenes like this all over the region. And this morning, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is saying about 130 additional National Guard troops and some 30 vehicles will be available in the hardest hit areas. Uh, Woo! <laughs> oh my god! How are we supposed to get through this? Oh, it stinks, too. Look at the wave. We're doing the wave. That's what
The entire province of B.C. is now under a state of emergency as hundreds of wildfires continue to burn. This dramatic video was taken yesterday at Fraser Lake near Prince George at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But you wouldn't know it as smoke and ash effectively filter out the afternoon sun. Public Safety Minister Mike Farnworth saying the decision to declare an emergency was made to ensure public safety. There are some significant differences between the fire situation last year and this year. Uh, this year what we're de dealing with is fires all over the province of British Columbia, whereas last year they were tended to be concentrated in a number of areas, the Caribou for example. Right now there are over 3,300 personnel fighting more than 560 wildfires. 29 evacuation orders are affecting over 3,000 people, with another 48 evacuation alerts advising more than 18,000 people to stay ready to flee at a moment's notice. Meanwhile, in Metro Vancouver, the smoke from the wildfires is blanketing the city and an air quality advisory drags through the midweek. You can even see here in this footage taken just three weeks ago from this location just how different the sky has become. And the mountains, nowhere to be seen. The state of emergency is in effect for 14 days and can be extended if needed. Officials saying it will ensure federal, provincial and local resources can be delivered in a coordinated manner. Definitely staying very active across the province. That's keeping our crews busy. Um, we are trying to manage their fatigue best we can, uh, making sure they're getting days off. And that also factors into why we can bring in so many additional resources. Now the federal government has accepted British Columbia's request for assistance, meaning additional federal personnel and resources will be arriving to assist almost immediately. During the 2017 wildfire season, the province was under an official state of emergency as well for 10 weeks. As for relief, it looks like none is on the way in the coming days as the extended weather forecast calls for continued hot and dry conditions with the risk of thunderstorms in some parts of the province. In Vancouver, David Zura, City News. A la verga, la camioneta se está moviendo. pendejo también ya se está moviendo ¿eh?
They'd planned for some peace and sunshine, but found themselves on a holiday from hell as 1,600 people were evacuated from areas of southern France. Most of them were campers whose tents were unable to hold out against the torrential rain and strong winds. The severe flooding comes after much of southern Europe, including areas of France, experienced unusually hot weather. More than 400 firefighters and other emergency services were helping out, along with four helicopters. The first thing was that I set up a device to make a quick reconnaissance to identify where people were hanging on to trees. They were adults and especially children. With teams in pairs, we first secured people to the trees. We fixed them and then after a while they were evacuated. But we did the rescue operation because the people were hypothermic. In one camp alone in saint julien de Perola, almost 120 children were evacuated in a major rescue operation. But as the extreme weather conditions took their toll on the rivers, roads and countryside, the emergency services faced some huge challenges. We had to make sure there were no more stranded people that hadn't been counted to eliminate all doubt as to potential victims. Four German children were taken to hospital after suffering from hypothermia. Ten people were treated for minor injuries. And for those inside their own houses, there was no escape from the weather. My roof can take winds of up to 130 kilometers an hour. I don't have a roof anymore, so that means it must have blown at least 150 or 160 kilometers an hour. The cleanup will continue for a long time, as will the process of counting the cost of the damage. And for thousands of campers in southern France, their holiday is well and truly over. Philip Cherm, Euronews.